We are just half an hour away from finding out who will face off against Matthew Thomason in our Masters Grand Final. So hang on tight as we prepare to spend another exciting evening with two great champions and nine rounds of fast-paced action. We will meet our challenges very shortly, but first, let's reach our revered referees beginning with Lisa. Hello, I'm Richard Moorcroft and welcome to Letters and Numbers where your nightly workout for the brain cells is only a pen and paper away. What a great week it's been! And we've certainly got another night of challenge lined up for you. But first of all, the mathematician who can untangle an equation in seconds flat, Lily Cerner. And then, Lily, you do seem to have been very quick at untangling the problems this week. We've had a few curly ones, I think. <laughs> you certainly sorted them out. Welcome tonight, anyway. And the man for whom the term David Astle was coined to describe David Astle. Actually, speaking of things that refer to, well, our own names at the moment, I actually heard somebody yesterday talk about gilding the lily. And, of course, I thought about our lily, who, well, I suppose doesn't need to be gilded. So where did that come from? Uh, well, the phrase does mean to uh, spoil something by uh, over-embellishing it, uh, making something beautiful more beautiful, and consequently it's not beautiful. But it's actually a uh, misquotation from uh, Shakespeare, which, uh, from the King John play, which is uh, to gild refined gold, to paint the lily. The yeah, actual phrase is to paint well, we the lily, but we've actually Good condensed luck. that to and gild the lily. It's gone into popular parlance no, of gilding the lily. That's right, yes. Excellent. Again, Thanks, we, David. And here to untangle it, equations, as well as coining a few uh, terms, perhaps, our contestants. In fact, in First up, our carryover champion, back, back for his fourth night, medical student, Dom Sarek. Dom, he great to see you again. Good to be here. You've played a few games. Have you decided whether you are a letters person or a numbers person? I think I've always been a letters person. You certainly seem to have great skills there, but as I understand it, English wasn't always your first language. No, that's right. I was born in Croatia, and so Croatia is my first language, and and um, when I first went to primary school here in Australia, I went to English second language classes for two years and eventually just loved the language and progressed uh, into taking up four units of English for the HSC. Well, you've worked with it hugely competitively here, and we wish you all the best tonight as well. Good to see you back. And ready to challenge Dom is Damien Fung a public servant with a degree in biomedical science and a diploma in languages. He spent three years living and working in rural Japan. So, welcome very much to you, Damien. Thanks very much, Richard. Now, it sounded fascinating living and working in rural Japan. How did you come to be doing it? Uh, I actually went on the Japanese government Japan exchange and teaching program, and I worked as an assistant language teacher in government schools in Ibaraki Prefecture. And although it was quite close to Tokyo, I had rice paddies all around my apartment. It was very, very rural. The nearest train station was two cities away. So uh, I got the benefits of living in the countryside in terms of uh, developing a greater understanding of Japanese culture and language than I may have in the city. Well, a fascinating experience. Please welcome both of our competitors tonight, Dom Sarek and Damien Fong. And let's roll into our Friday night letters game. In this round, only the longest word gets a score. And uh, Dom, as our carryover champion, of course, you get to make the first pick. Thanks, Richard. Hi, Lindy. Can we start with a consonant, please? We can. Thanks, Dom. Let's start with a T. Another consonant, thanks. Like those F. Sound. I've got a six. And can I get a vowel, please? Hang on to that. E. Sam. Another six. vowel, thanks. I. And a consonant, please. R. Another consonant, thanks. C. And a vowel, please. A. One more vowel. E. And we'll finish with a consonant, thanks. And finally, G. Thank you, Lily. Here's our first 30 seconds. For a Friday night, Dom, how did you go? Seven. And what about you? I've only got six this time, Richard. And what was your six, Damien? I had greater. And Dom, your seven? Frigate. Two interesting starts, David. 
No, I should just clarify before we move on to frigate, Damien. Uh, greater. Um, possibly there was an R there that you have... Uh, oh, you're so right. That's sorry, nerves have got me in the first round. <laughs> no troubles, not to worry. Frigate, it is a uh, warship of over 2,700 tonnes and a great seven. Well done. So, seven points to start Dom tonight. Let's keep our Friday night moving along and move straight to our second letters game. And uh, Damien, what would you like to choose this time, please? Let's start with a consonant, thanks, Lily. Thanks, Damien. Let's start with an M. And can I have another consonant, please? R. One more. C. And I'll have a vowel next, thanks. A. And another vowel. I. And one more. E. And one more. Okay, so o. Nice and I'll have a consonant next, please. D. And one more consonant, thanks. And finally, R. Thanks, Lily. The time starts now. Damien, how did you go after your first letter selection? I'm going to say six again and hopefully I've used the right letters this time. All right, fingers crossed for you, Dom. Seven. Let's see what your six was first, Damien. I had roared. And Dom? Carried. Carried and roared, David. And carried, carried, uh, carried the day. Great play, a good seven. And I found Comrade just uh, getting a little bit Russian for a minute <laughs> as a possible seven as well. So, seven points again for Dom. Well, Lily can feel her Friday night untangling coming on already. That means that we need to move to the numbers game. So, uh, Dom, you better select some numbers for us, please. Can I get two large and four small, please, Lily? Two large and four small. Thanks, Dom. And our numbers are two, three, seven, and one. And the two large... 125 and the target to reach 986. Big one, 30 seconds to get there. It was a big number. How did you go? I got 978. So you're within the scoring territory, but uh, only just. What about you, Damien? Also within the scoring range, but a little bit further than Dom, I'm afraid. What did you get? Uh, 976. Okay. Well, Dom, tell us how you got to your conclusion. Okay. 7 plus 3 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 times 100 is 1,000. By the 100 is 1,000. Minus 25. Minus... 975. 975. Plus 2 plus 1. Is 978. Plus the 2 and the 1, 978. So, well done, Dom. Now, Lily, uh, was it a, a tough calculation? It was really difficult because it was so big, but what I did is divided it by 2, which is 493, and tried to get to 493 first. Um, the way I did that was I added the 25 to 100, which gives you 125. Now, 125 by 3 plus 1, which is 4, gives you 500. 500 minus 7 gives you 493, and by the 2 gives you 986. Very nicely done, almost off the page, but it's interesting the way that 493 is so much more manageable than the 986. Well done, Lily. So, five points to Dom, and we are heading towards our first break, and that's uh, our first word mix, of course, for a Friday night. It's cry-lined, and the clue this time... A number of these in your engine. Back after the break.